Hi everyone, it's your classmate Kadeja, and I will be comparing Native American and African American parenting styles to determine which culture's parenting style has a stronger impact on academic achievement of their children. So previous research about this topic has not compared Native Americans and African Americans specifically. There has been research done on African Americans that compares them to European Americans, Asian Americans, and Latin Americans. There has been research on Native Americans that compares them to European Americans only. So start off, I want to talk about the different groups and who they are. Native Americans are a diverse group of indigenous people located in the United States. Currently, there are 5.2 million Native Americans in the United States according to the 2010 census. This includes individuals who identified as American Indian and Alaska Native only, or those who identified as American Indian and Alaska Native combined with another race such as black or white. Native American families are more collectivistic than individualistic. They can be described as having a cooperative family life that includes immediate family as well as extended family in their communities and tribes. Being that Native Americans are collectivistic, this means that their community and their tribes and interdependence between the groups are more important to them than their individual selves. In Native American society, it is common for parenting to be done by older siblings as well as grandparents and other extended family members. African Americans are members of the black race living in the United States. In this presentation, this term refers to any member of the black racial groups of Africa, including West Indians, Africans, and black Americans. There are currently 308 million African Americans in the United States. They comprise 13% of the total population according to the 2010 census. Like Native Americans, African Americans are more collectivistic than European Americans. However, when it comes to individualism, there is no real difference between African Americans and white Americans. As in the Native American community, grandparents and older siblings are crucial in the African American com community as caretakers of young children. Two-thirds of African American children are raised by a single parent and their extended family. Diana Baumrin has done extensive work on parenting styles. She has developed three parenting styles that I will explain to the class now. Permissive parents do not attempt to rule over their children or set boundaries for them. They are low on demand and higher on responsiveness and they are relatively warm to their children. This means that they do not order their children around much and they respond to their children in warm and positive ways. The next parenting style is authoritarian parents. Authoritarian parents like for things to be done their way or no way at all. They use force to control their children and mold them into what they want them to be. They value obedience from their children and expect everything to be done their way. They are high on demand and very low on responsiveness. The last parenting style is authoritative parenting. Authoritative parents are a good balance between permissive and authoritarian parents. These parents encourage give and take between children and parents. They encourage debate between the groups and expect that their children work hard, but they also give their children breaks. They are both high on demand and high on responsiveness with their children. In general, which parenting style is linked to better academic achievement? Studies done by Dornbush et al. show that students with authoritative parents have higher grades than students with authoritarian and permissive parents. African American parents are typically authoritarian parents. They typically expect obedience from their children and they are more likely to apply this style to their sons over their daughters because of perceived behavioral differences. They believe that their sons act out more so they must do more to control their sons. Black mothers also expect unreasonable levels of obedience from their children and they rate higher on negativity and detachment than white mothers when it comes to their children. Native American parents are seen as permissive parents. Native American children are allowed to be autonomous and develop in their own time with no set rules. Because Native Americans do not set the rules for their children, they allow their children to make their own decisions and they promote interdependence amongst their tribe. 
Academic Achievement Comparison for, innate, for African Americans. There is a strong negative correlation between authoritarian parents and grades, according to Dornbush et al. This is important because African Americans are authoritarian parents. This shows that their authoritarian style of parenting can impact the grades and academic achievement of their children. The negative correlation means that as authoritarian values go up, the grades of their children can potentially go down. Native Americans do worse in school than the majority because they have different values than the majority. Native American parents believe that restricting children to rules and regulation of society disrespects their autonomy. They do not encourage their children to be on time for school or to complete projects on time because time is not a concept that is necessarily important to Native Americans. Due to them not caring about time and not caring about getting assignments and homework done on time, they may not perform as well academically as they could. Conclusions? According to the research done by Dawn Bush et al., authoritarian parenting is the most damaging parenting style to a child's academic achievement. Dawn Bush analyzed the three parenting styles and compared them to the reported grades and GPAs of students from different racial backgrounds in San Francisco. The negative correlation of authoritarian parenting to grades produced the strongest correlation of the three parenting styles, with a negative correlation of negative 0.18 for males and a negative correlation of negative 0.23 for females. His research suggests that African Americans are more negatively affected by their authoritarian parenting than Native Americans are affected by their permissive parenting. Going by this, it would seem that Native Americans parenting is not as harsh as African Americans parenting and African American parenting impacts the academic achievement of their children more than Native American parenting. However, however although based on Dornbush's research African Americans seem to be affected worse by their parenting style, when this conclusion is compared to the high school dropout rates in the United States, Native Americans actually seem to be doing worse than African Americans. If you look at the graph posted below, you can see that American Indians slash Alaska Natives have a higher dropout rate than African Americans. Theirs is 6.7% while African Americans is at 5.5%. This shows that academically Native Americans seem to be doing worse than African Americans even though the conclusion says otherwise. Work by researcher Nancy Darling found that children of authoritarian parents perform better than, perform than permissive children in school. They just happen to have more social problems, while permissive children do not perform as well, but they have less social problems. In addition, Lauren et al. found that children who grow up in an authoritarian environment when they also grow up in a collective environment, they are more used to their parents' harsh treatment and they understand that it is a part of the culture, so they do not take it as negatively as children in an individualist society would. This explains why African Americans may do better because they grew up in a collective environment, so they understand that their parents are not doing these things to be mean to them, but to make them better. These two points make it clear that we must consider other factors that can influence academic achievement, such as self-motivation and self-efficacy. Thank you guys for watching my presentation. These are just all of the sources that I have used. Thank you. Bye.